All right, we will be uh, joined momentarily by two student athletes from the Syracuse Orange, guard Frank Howard and guard Tyus Battle. Just a couple of the ground rules, if you will. We ask that you silence cell phones and other mobile devices. There is no flash photography or any video recording allowed, but for audio and video, you can use the distribution sites across the hall. Back of the room, take a left straight across the tunnel. Uh, when you got a question, raise your hand. We'll bring the mic to you. Wait for the mic. Identify yourself by name and affiliation. And we ask that you direct your question to a specific student athlete. You can find transcripts of this press conference, the others from Shoot Around today, and the postgame press conferences tonight and tomorrow at ncaa.com slash transcripts. All right, we'll open the floor for questions for our student athletes. Yep, front right here. Mike Waters, Syracuse Post Standard, Syracuse.com. Tyus, could you describe all the ups and downs, the guys who've left the team, the guys who've been hurt, and how you guys somehow managed to make it to the tournament this year with all that other stuff going on? Um, I mean, there was definitely some ups and downs throughout the season. Um, but we have a special group this year. Uh, these, guys, these guys just kept on playing. We fought through injuries, uh, fought through guys leaving. Um, so it was, it was all about the heart that we had on this team this year. And uh, we got an opportunity to make it here, and, and we're going to make the most of it. Right here, front right. Adana Detelio from the Post Standard and Syracuse.com. Frank, uh, have you been sick, and what's your what's your deal? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, dealing with strep throat for the last few days. So, but you know, I've been taking the meds, getting a lot of sleep. So, no, I'll be fine. You're in the front again on the right. Doug Howler, the Arizona Republic. Uh, obviously, you guys are known for your zone, but for teams that have not seen it uh, a whole lot outside of conference, what is it do you think that makes it so effective for both of you? Frank, can you answer that first? Um, I just think uh, our zone is very different, you know, from a lot of a lot of different zones out there. I think uh, we have very unique zones. So, you know, the mixture of uh, of length, you know, athleticism and uh, you know, activity level when it's good. Uh, I think it's very hard to attack it. And uh, I think uh, after we play this a few times, you know, you may be able to get familiar with it a little bit, or, you know, with spots to, to, to attack or whatever. But I think uh, when you haven't seen it up close and personal and, and you know, at all, I think uh, it can be very difficult to attack. Tyus? Um, yeah, just like Frank said, we're long, athletic, uh, versatile. Uh, we have a seven foot shot blocker down low. Um, and even if he doesn't block it, he'll change your shot. So it makes things tough. And we're both 6'5 uh, six, and 6'6 six, six up top. So that's a lot of length. You're on the right. Mike Waters from the Syracuse Post Standard. Uh, this one's for Frank. With guys leaving or guys getting hurt, how have you adapted after each one of those? Uh, to kind of keep this thing moving forward. Yeah, you know, um, from from both those guys, you know, they, they brought something different to our team. You know, so I had to, uh, you know, me and Ty had to pick up the slack on, on, on those two, you know, two different areas. Uh, you know, Gino is more of a score defender, <clears throat> and uh, you know how he controlled the game, and uh, you know just made the right plays. So, you know, um, every game is a little different for me. You know, I feel like. Some games I have to focus on scoring more. Some games, you know, I just have to go out there and put guys in the right spots and, uh, you know, get guys like Tyus the ball. So um, I just try to, you know, go game by game, you know, try to figure out what, what the team needs and what will be our best way to attack them. Right here on the right. Fred Wagley, University of Dayton. What was your guys' reaction to getting in the first four and what was the feeling in the locker room? Frank? Uh, well, uh, 
I wasn't there. I was uh I was at home. But uh, you know, I got the calls from the guys. Um, you know, I, I was just as happy as them. You know, I was upset I couldn't be there, but you know, um we understand, uh, you know, this is just the beginning. You know, we don't want to, you know, get too high on this. You know, we want to still have perspective and, uh, you know, still understand what we're here for. <clears throat> so, you know, we're, we're all just focused. You know, we're ready to work. Um, you know, we're just happy to be here. Tyus? I mean, uh, man, the locker room was crazy. Uh, going into it, we weren't sure if we were in or out. I don't think anyone was too sure. Uh, but when we found out we were in, Everyone in the locker room went crazy, um, and um, but just like Frank said, we can't get too high or too low. Um, we're here, and we have to win games and uh, keep this thing going. Any further questions? All right, Frank and Tyus, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. We will be joined next by the head coach of the Syracuse Orange, Jim Beheim. All right, we're now being joined by Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. You know, if you'd like, you make an opening statement, and we'll open the floor for questions. No, we can open the floor. Questions for Coach Beheim. Here front right. Hi, Jim. Doug Haller, the Arizona Republic. You uh, were in position to actually coach against Bobby Hurley as a player. Do you see any of those qualities that he demonstrated as a player? In no, his, yeah. Bobby was an unbelievable player. I, you know, started watching him when he was in high school, really. He was uh, known his father for a long time. We recruited his school a long time. And, uh, you know, he was. Uh, player that just, you know, gave everything, every play, and uh, his, he coaches the same way, and uh, he's done an incredible job both at, uh, you know, Buffalo and then now coming out to Arizona State. Uh, he's, you know, his whole family is probably as intense as any basketball family, and his mother probably leads the way. Nobody knows that. <laughs> You're on the left. Marcos Ledesma, University of Dayton. Uh, what are some of the challenges Arizona State's present to you? Well, you know, they uh, obviously uh, the start to the season, they're a the top five team in the country. And when you get to a tournament, um, that's what you expect to see the, them play at that level. And, uh, you know, they obviously shoot the ball extremely well. They push the ball up the court uh, as well as any team in the country. They're as good an offensive team as anybody in the country. Uh, any team that has multiple uh, scores is always a difficult team to play defensively against. And uh, they have multiple guys that can shoot it and get to the basket and push the ball up the court. <clears throat> 
back left. Hi, Jim. Garrett Hill, uh, University of Dayton. What's it like coaching this special group of guys, and how, how do they compare to teams in the past that you've coached in the tournament? Well, this team has done everything I, you could ask them to do. It's, uh, it's obviously, um, you know, we have three guys that play 40 minutes every game, and uh, we really cannot take them out of the game. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a challenge for them. When you go over the course of the season, when you get into certain stretches where you play, you know, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's a lot. It's it's a, a very difficult league. There's there's no games that you can uh, take off, and uh, you have to give maximum effort in every every play. We were in those kind of games all year, so I, I think the, the this group deserves. A, a, in my mind, uh, I give them a tremendous amount of credit for how they've hung in there. Um, and obviously, we're, we have some tremendous challenges uh, health-wise all year with the number of guys. And, you know, guys played hurt all year long, everybody on our team. And, you know, we have seven guys now. One's hurt all the time, and the other guy's been hurt for about six weeks. and. The, the five starters have something going on with them, but they've hung in there. Uh, they they deserve an awful lot of credit, I think. You're on the right again. Mike Waters from Syracuse Post Standard. Jim, piggybacking off of that, does this year compare to any other year in terms of injuries and departures that you've had over the last 40 some odd years? And, and maybe well, we don't always we, – we try to have nine guys or ten. I mean, ideally, we, the year we won the championship, we had nine. We only – we played eight. I mean, that's the right number. Everybody's happy. <laughs> you know, you, you just you – know, when you start with nine, you can't afford to have anything uh, from an injury standpoint go, go wrong. And, you know, we lost a guy late this year that coming into the summer or at the end of the summer that, that you know, obviously hurt us uh, in, in our front line. Um, we lost a guard early uh, that we didn't expect to. And then uh, when Howard got hurt, that was, you know, I, I've never had a team with two guards, uh, recruited guards on the team. I don't think any, I don't know of any program in the country that's had a team that has two guys that were recruited in the backcourt. So, in a lot of ways, we're very fortunate that those two guys got through uh, the year. Uh, I think we're really fortunate to, for that and with the amount they've had to play. Uh, so, uh, again, it's been uh, – we've never been at where you have six – five healthy guys and two guys that are not really healthy that are playing. So. Uh, it's been a unique, uh, unique type of year. You can, you, you just need eight guys, and if you have seven healthy guys, you, that's really all you need. There's a lot of teams in this tournament right now that really only play seven guys. I mean, uh, they, there's a couple teams that are exceptions to that, but for the most part, if you look at the t great teams that have played over the years in this tournament. Three or four guys play most of the time, and two or three guys play most of the rest of the time, and then there's maybe one or two guys that play a couple minutes here and there in the in the big game, in the tough games. But we're, we're a little bit under where we'd like to be for sure. You're back left, Michael Lovers by the University of Dayton. <clears throat> Coach, are you looking forward to the uh, coaching matchup against Bobby Hurley and his family's history? Well, you know, I've, <clears throat> I've known the Hurleys for uh, 40 years, uh, going back uh, actually before that when I was an assistant coach. Uh, uh, Bob Hurley's, uh, you can make a good case that he's the best high school coach that, uh, that ever coached. Uh, no one has more worked harder at the game and, uh, than Bob Hurley did. I've, 
been around him for a long time and watched him and watched his practices and teams and uh, there's nobody uh, more prepared and more uh, involved in coaching than, than than Bob and Danny and and Bobby are, are you know do are very very similar. They'll never be as good as their father, but they're pretty good. Bob Hurley is one of the great coaches that ever coached basketball anywhere. You're on the right. Brad Mogley, University of Dayton. You've experienced a lot of locations and a lot of NCAA tournaments. How would Dayton stack up so far with some of the others? This is great. It's a great place. Um, you know, I, it's better to make the comments after the game, but I feel this is like as good as any place we've been, and I think it will be. I'm anticipating a little bit. But I think it's a great place to host this tournament. Uh, you know, the people here do a great job. They want it here. And <clears throat> there's a lot of first-round sites that you go to that I've gone to over the years that aren't really that good. <laughs> so, you know, this is a, obviously seems like a great place, and I'm sure I'll have that same feeling after, after we've been here for a couple of days. Front right again. Mike Waters, Syracuse Post Standard. You mentioned all the minutes that Frank and Tyus have to play, that they don't come off the court. But they're guards, and I don't know if that makes them able to play more. But with Pascal and the minutes he's had to play, how has he been able to kind of, especially late in the year here, keep going the way he has? Because we know he's been uh, Well, you know, hurt. it's his first year, Mike, and he's. I think he's finally – he's growing into um, what he's doing. I, I mean, people – don't sometimes realize that he really didn't play that much high school basketball here. He was kind of new to the game, and his freshman year he played very little, 10 minutes maybe a game at Providence. Then he sat out a year. Then last year he got hurt after a few games and, uh, you know, really never played more than 15 minutes a game probably last year. And then to come into this year, and uh, I think he's made a, a great adjustment. I think he's uh, really at the level of playing time and experience of a freshman. So I think he's gotten better. I think he can get a lot better. But overall, he's had a, a really, really solid year. He's the reason our defense is better this year than it was last year. He's the main reason <clears throat> that our defense is better. This year, we didn't have that center presence last year, and that, that hurt us. We were a really good offensive team last year, and we were not – we were a terrible defensive team. Any further questions for Coach? In the back, left. Uh, Tiffany Hendricks, University of Dayton. With this team being more inexperienced and a little bit younger, how do you tell them to approach this tournament, it being a win or go home? You know, when you're playing this tournament, it's, uh, you know, you, obviously it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, everybody knows how the importance, but you, you have to try to approach it like it's your next game and you try to get them ready the same way you would because in, in, with this team and – you know, every game was crucial for us. We we couldn't let any game slip away. You know, even in the Wake Forest game, was Wake Forest is a very good offensive team. We had to have that win. But every game we played during the year, or going back to the beginning when we played Toledo and Eastern Michigan and Oakland and Buffalo, you know, we knew those games were going to be important. Uh, we knew those teams were going to be good. And Iona and Texas Southern, you know, three of those teams got into the NCAA tournament. And so we knew every game we had to be prepared. We couldn't have a game like, well, we're just not quite ready tonight because we couldn't win against those teams. And uh, this team, you know, has been focused all year. They've, they've done the really the best I think they could do. Uh, and that's unusual. You don't. You, if you're honest, you really would not say that about every team. <laughs> you know, every team slips here or slips there, or doesn't come out. Not necessarily doesn't come out to play, but doesn't come out and play well. This team's 
done everything they could do. We have our shortcomings on offense, but there's never been uh, a lack of uh, trying to get things done. And uh, we approach tournaments, we have approached tournaments for a long time, like let's get ready and try to play the way we can play. But uh, when you're on the on the edge every game, you get used to it. We're used to having to play well. And obviously, in this tournament, you have to play well. Front right again. Mike Waters, Syracuse Post Standard. Did you recruit Bobby or Danny? Because the yeah, only St. Anthony's guy I remember is Terrence We didn't Roberts. recruit Danny. Yeah, PJ got him early, so. Uh, I figured that would be enough punishment for Danny having to play for PJ, but uh, the uh, we uh, we did recruit Bobby. It was a it was a confluence of there was we were we were you know we obviously were at the top of our game back then, and we recruited Bobby, and that was the year Kenny Anderson was in the same class and. Uh, there was a couple other, I think it was Kenny, I hope I'm right, and it was, it was a great guard, I think it was, and uh, we we did recruit him, he came up, uh, and but, uh, you know, we kind of, it was really Duke got in there, it was really, we focused that year on, on Kenny, and, uh, and so, but the, we recruited both those guys that year. My recollection of it is. Am I missing any other St. Anthony's guys besides Terrence? Uh, you know, we recruited at St. Anthony's. I told Bob, you know, Bob and I were good friends, have been good friends for 40 years. We never really got anybody there for a long time. We, we, the guy, a couple guys we might have been able to get, we really didn't, didn't like that much. And a couple other guys, I mean, I go back to Mandy Williams, who went to, when I was an assistant coach, who ended up at Marquette that we recruited. And, uh, there was a number of guys that we kind of we never really got locked in on a guy that wanted to come and that we wanted. It was always that, and Terrence was uh, the first guy that and really came and had had a good career for us. But um, you know, we uh, I I would go pretty much every year down to to St. Anthony's to watch a practice and. Talk to uh, talk to Bob. Any further questions? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Next scheduled uh, start of a press conference will be at one thirty-five. We will be joined uh, in about twenty minutes by the student athletes from the Arizona State Sun Devils.
You guys good? All right, now being joined by student athletes from the Arizona State Sun Devils, Trey Holder, Shannon Evans, and Cody Justice. Just ask that you silence your cell phones and other mobile devices. There is no photography or video recording allowed, but the AV sites are straight across the hall in the tunnel. Uh, when asking you a question, uh, we ask that you raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around. Just wait for the mic, and then we ask that you address uh, your questions to specific student athletes. You can find transcripts um, of this press conference, the others from shoot arounds all week, and also for the post games tonight at NCAA.com slash transcripts. And we'll open the floor for questions. Here on the aisle on the right. Yeah, this, uh, this goes to all three, sen three seniors. Um, since Selection Sunday, what has the past 48 hours been for you guys? I know you, you were emotional, obviously. It was an emotional time for you guys. So just describe your emotions over the past 48 hours. Trey, can you answer that first? Um, it's been you know, very exciting just to be able to celebrate you know, with my team. Uh, we came in on Sunday not you know, knowing where our future was going to be. And uh, when I found out, you know, you know, I started you know, being emotional. And it was just a great day. Um, and I'm happy I'm in this position with my teammates because we worked so hard all year. And uh, I feel like you know, we deserve it. Shannon? Uh, kind of piggyback what Trey said. It was, it was a good time for us. Uh, we really didn't know uh, what our fate was going to be like before the selection show. So uh, when, they, when they announced our name, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. Cody. Yeah, it was definitely like a roller coaster ride. In the beginning, you just didn't know. We were we were nervous. We we knew we had a good shot to make it. We knew we had uh, a great non-conference with two big wins over number one seed. So we knew we had a shot. So our emotions in the beginning, we were just nervous. But after we found out, just to be able to share this moment with these guys, all the the things we've been through to be able to finally take this team to the tournament. It was just an exciting day. Front left. Russell Tedrick, Channel 12. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, what are your thoughts in being here in Dayton, Ohio, and there's snow outside and just the overall travel experience? Cody? Um, it's different. It's a little cold outside, like you said. Um, different than Arizona, but just to be able to be out here, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's cool to be able to be a part of the whole March Madness, this NCAA tournament, and we're just excited to kind of get going. Jen? Uh, like, like you said, it's cool. I mean, the weather, you know, it's kind of better in Tempe, I would say. But, uh, I mean, just the, the whole environment, uh, the March Madness, the feel to it, and uh, everything about it is great, and I'm glad to be here. Trey? Uh, the energy, you can definitely feel it. Um, coming in yesterday, we were greeted by fans, and the people who hosted it um, were very open-armed, and it was great to be here. And now. You know, I've seen a lot of teams play the last couple of years in this building, so you know I'm anxious to get out there. You know, and um, I'm just happy to be here. Front right, Doug Howler, Arizona Republic. As you guys struggled in the Pac-12, and people started to discuss whether or not you would make the NCAA tournament, did now that it's now that you're in, did you guys start to feel a little bit pressure just facing that possibility? Trey, can you answer that first? Um. Overall, I think our conference was kind of, you know, underrated in a way. Um, I know we didn't have our, – our conference as a whole didn't have the best non-conference, but I think teams really figured out, you know, the best way their team could survive. I know a lot of teams went to zone, and uh, that was really a good uh, decision by their coaches because it worked effectively for them. And I feel like if they would have had that early in the non-conference, and I know a lot of teams were young as well, so – I think once they got into a conference play, um, they were able to find their niche and they were more comfortable in their system. You're on the aisle on the left. Yeah, Matthew Tonis, Cronkite News. Um, I know it's a while ago, but Bobby compared that St. John's Kansas weekend to the NCAA tournament. How do you feel like that's helped you guys prepare coming into this week with such short notice? Shannon, can you answer that? Uh, I mean, I feel like it helped us tremendously. Uh, like you said, both of those two games were, were big time games for us, and uh, this whole week is, is going to be good for us. Uh, taking game one game at a time, starting tomorrow, things like that. So, I mean, I feel like uh, it really prepared us, and I feel like we're ready for the challenge. Here, front left. Uh, Trusted Tedrick, Channel 12, KPNX TV. Uh, 
So you guys get to the tournament and you're here. Is there less pressure? There was so much expectation during the season with that slump, and now do you kind of feel like, all right, we're here, we can breathe and just play basketball, or is there even more expectations to live up to? Cody? I mean, me personally, and I know probably these guys, I don't know if you could ever say we felt the pressure. It's basketball. We're out here playing a game we love. There's basketball, there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be win streaks. There's going to be on losing streaks. It's just it's what it is. So it's hard to control some of those things. What you can control is your effort, your energy every single day. So we knew if we went out there and competed and played our hearts out, we were going to be able to hopefully come out on top. And then there's sometimes you just don't. So we just go out there every single day and play as hard as we can. So we never really felt pressure. I don't know if that, that pressure is something you put on yourself. So being able to be in a tournament and kind of just you get this fresh start. So the energy is up. It's better. Everything's flowing. Everything. It just feels better to be in this environment. Here in the right on the aisle. Uh, Trey, at one point you said when, when, you, when the team was at this highest point, ranked number three in the country, you said that you felt like teams were going to come after you now and that you were the hunted. And then yesterday, Cody, oh, excuse me, on Sunday, you said that now you guys can be hunters. How much does that change your guys' mentality heading into the tournament? I mean, it gave us that, that um, underdog again. We're, we're the underdog. We're, we're not looked at to be one of the guys that can win this tournament. So we can go out there and just play our game, play free, do what we do and um, not worry about anything. It's literally, we're out here playing basketball, having fun. So now being a hunter, you can go out and play free instead of, you. on most nights when you're the hunted, you get everyone's A game. So we're just gonna go out there and play our game. Front left again. Uh, yeah. Trey mentioned the zone earlier, gave you guys some trouble. Now you're going up against the team whose entire culture is built around a zone. Just from what you've seen, um, on film, I don't know if you've had a chance to really study it yet, but what stands out about Syracuse's zone, uh, Cody and Shannon? Cody, can you answer that first? Um, it's probably they're probably one of the biggest teams you'll play against. You go from six five all the way to seven two, so they're they're real big, they're athletic, so they're going to give us challenges. Um, we're going to have to be able to be smart in uh, where we attack it. We're going to have to make sure. We, we attack it and we do the right thing. We take smart shots. We got to um, attack the offensive glass. So there's going to be a lot of things where we're going to have to be able to attack in certain positions, but we're going to have to be smart about it. And being able to go through the entire Pac-12, most teams zoned us, so we're kind of ready for zones. Jenna? Uh, kind of pick up what Trey said. Uh, I mean, Cody, uh, we, we got to be able to attack the gaps and things like that. Like they're real big and uh, up front. Six five six six 6 all the way to seven two, inside. So uh, being effective and just uh, not throwing lazy passes and things like that, uh, I feel like that will help. But the, I feel like the biggest thing, like he said, attack the off the glass and try to get second chance shots. Front lift again. Hey guys, so this moment, senior guards, can you just put it into words and just the overall emotions and excitement and putting Arizona State on the map so early on in the season and now you guys are here. Can you just describe that feeling? Shannon, can you answer that first? Uh, it feels good uh, just to see where we started from. I know these guys have been here longer than I have, but to see where they started from then to see like now uh, how our program has changed. So it's a great feeling and you know I'm, I'm proud to be here definitely with these guys beside me. Trey? Uh, it's definitely been a dream of mine. Um, this uh, this preseason, I talked with these guys, and now it's our whole goal of the season was to make the tournament. And uh, that's the reason why I was a little bit emotional because, um, you know, almost slipped to the door when we were on such a high note. And, you know, we thought, you know, we were for sure going to make it. But, you know, it came close. And I'm, you know, just glad the committee, you know, re reasoned with us, and, and we're here. Cody? Um, yeah, it's definitely exciting to be able to be here with these guys. We've been through a lot. We've worked so hard. Um, so just to be able to share this moment with these guys, my teammates, the coaches and all that, it's great to be able to go out there and keep uh, competing because, like you said, we're seniors. So just be able to put this team back on a map, put the team on our back and all that, it's, it's exciting. Front left here again. I know you guys have emphasized that you, played, that you faced a lot of zone, but – do you have? Did you guys look specifically at that Washington game, knowing that their coach runs that same zone that Syracuse does? Cody. 
Um, we've looked at multiple zones. Yeah, we'll look at Washington because they played at it, but it's it's different. It, their size, athleticism, it's just it's a different zone all around. So it's it's hard to compare their zone to any of uh, other zones. But the way we attacked Washington's zone with being able to get the ball to the middle, attack the gaps, that's definitely things we're gonna have to do. Front left. Uh, Cody, specifically for you, you know Arizona State. It's been the team you've rooted for since you were. Um, little boy and now you're here playing with them in this tournament and uh, what does it mean for you to kind of help put your city on the map especially some a town that you've grown up with and the fans that you have at home supporting you it, it means the world to me it means it, this is a dream for me to be able to be a, a local kid from Arizona to be able to take this team to the tournament to be able to do things this team this city's never seen so it's just it's ex an exciting moment for me it's great to be like I said to share with these guys I wouldn't be able to put this team where we're at without them. They've helped me so much to help me grow as a player, as an individual. So it's just a great feeling all around. Any further questions? Front left. And you guys just, um, what about being here with Bobby Hurley and just his history with uh, his family and just their integration in uh, basketball in general and just being able to be under his leadership in this critical moment? Cody, can you answer that first? Um, it means a lot. Um, he's taught us a lot, uh, not just from playing in this tournament, but to be better people, be better basketball players all around. So being a, have him as your leader, it's great. I mean, who else could you ask? He's won two national championships. He's done it. So just to be able to listen to his words of encouragement, of things he, that he thinks we need to do, it's just it's great to have somebody like that in your corner. Shannon? Yeah, kind of what Cody said. Uh, it's kind of good to have a leader like that, somebody that's been there and done it. A lot, a lot of people, you know, talk about it and, and try to tell you things, but they, they never actually did it. So he's somebody that, that done it and, and did a great job doing it. So to have him here with us is amazing. Trey? Uh, I think it's, you know, great to have him on our side, um, especially for us because we're all guards and he was a guard. Um, he played in the ACC, um, so. It's ideal for us, and we just got to listen to him and follow his game plan because it will be successful if we do so. On the right, on the aisle. Yeah, uh, Chancellor Cronkite News. Uh, Trey, I know you said you were anxious coming into this, and how do you how do you expect to control your emotions and help lead the team, especially all three of the seniors as well, too, um, with it, coming in with a lot of emotions? I mean, you know, this could be it. This could be the last time I put this jersey on. So, you know, if, not only for myself, but I got to play for the guys, for the coaches, for the just fans. Um, you know, we don't want it to be our last game, so we got to give it all. Front right. <laughs> Bobby's ob obviously pretty intense, and I've heard bits and pieces about his, I don't know if it's just game day workouts that he does at the hotel or if he, I'm sure he does them every day, but is there anything that you guys, have you guys ever participated in these workouts or is there anything that you guys can tell us about these things? Trey, you can take that first. Um, the one thing that stuck out to me, we had in the summer, we had ran this mountain probably like five miles or so. It was about 100, some, 100 plus degrees at like 6 in the morning. And we all ran. It was optional if you wanted to win it or not. And yeah, he he was top three in our in our whole team. So that just tells you his mentality as a person. I know today I saw him drenched. Uh, he ran early before film. So his mindset, you could tell when he's on the sideline and you know, how it's instilled in us. Shannon? Yeah, I think he's crazy to be honest. But uh, kind of what Trey said, he's very intense. and. Uh, now that he said, I also look back to when we ran that mountain that day, and he was in like the top tier group of of the players as well. Uh, and every, I mean, every day he works out. And he tells us like how how he beat his time before and and things like that to motivate us as well. So, I mean, it's always good to have a, a warrior like that on the sideline for you. Cody. Yeah, I've never um, joined his workouts. They seem a little intense for me, but. Um, no, it's good to be able to have somebody who is a competitor. He wants to win in everything he does. So to be able to have somebody like that to not just push you every single day, but to challenge you to be better in everything you do. So just him being able to see him at 6 o'clock in the morning, he's drenched in sweat. And he, like Trey said, telling us his times and all that, it's just it's cool to see that to, because it makes you want to compete in everything you do. Any further questions? Trey, Shannon, up front left here. Go, no, go ahead. What's that? <laughs> Trey, Shannon, and Cody, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Uh, next, we will be joined by the.
head coach, your State Sun Devils, Bobby Hurley. I've been joined by the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, Bobby Hurley. Uh, right here. Give me this thing. Give me a bite. You're doing good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Bobby, if you'd like, you can start with an opening statement and uh, open the floor for questions. Well, it was uh, a very emotional couple of days, just a roller coaster, really, leading into Selection Sunday and uh, just playing different scenarios out and uh, the tension and the um, anxiety about wanting to be in this field and, and feeling like you deserve to play. And uh, so it was just a, an amazing feeling when, when we uh, were selected and just so happy for my players. My, uh, we, my seniors have been with me since you know, my first year uh, at Arizona State and, and uh, have gone through some tough times. And it was great to see them uh, experience that moment uh, on Sunday. And just we've had great practices and, and there's kind of renewed life uh, and enthusiasm to what we're doing. So we're, uh, we're really, really enthusiastic about the opportunity uh, to play tomorrow. Questions for Coach Hurley on the right, on the aisle. Hi, I'm Mitch Stacy with the AP. Uh, th with your team being a bubble team and your history in the tournament, what's it like to be in the unfamiliar position of having to prove that you belong here? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, at one point in late December, uh, we're at Arizona and, and we're down two with 35 seconds left and there's a loose ball and it's a, it's a tie up and we don't have the arrow or else we have a chance to go down the floor to tie or take the lead and probably on Monday, if we win, be the number one team in the country. Uh, so to ride that roller coaster and to to see us have our struggles and lose a lot of close games and, and not you know, win at the level that, that we had hoped. It, you know, we put ourselves in that position, uh, but we had a, a special uh, 
you know, non-conference. The guys, uh, the memories they gave us, uh, you know, at Kansas and Xavier, I think, put us in, in a great position. And, you know, we, we beat Kansas State on a neutral. And, you know, we played St. John's on a neutral. And St. John's has talent. They proved what they could do. You know, they fought a lot of injuries and such. And then, you know, San Diego State was another good win. So, you know, we accumulated a lot of victories versus teams uh, that were either in the NCAA tournament or, or considered uh, in the tournament. So I think that helped us. But, you know, I, in the future, I hope to not have to put myself through that if we're having a great season, to just close it out a little better, to, to take any of the doubt out. Front left. Hi, Tressa Tedrick at KPNX TV. Coach, with the expectations when they were doing so well in non-conference play at the top of the top, and then with that slump during conference play, do you think now that you're actually in the tournament, you could take like a deep breath, you can breathe a sigh of relief, like, okay, now we're here, let's get back to playing basketball? Yeah, I mean, Trey Holders had an outstanding season uh, as a senior. He was uh, 40 points uh, against Xavier. You know, 30 against Kansas, 29 at Arizona. He's he's that type of player. You know, to see that guy, you know, at my house on Sunday, just break down and cry. And Trey is, you know, he's got a poker face, man. He he doesn't show a ton of emotion outwardly. Uh, to see him, you know, have that moment, man, it was it was unbelievable. So, I just feel like in practice, uh, you know, we were we were awesome, you know, yesterday. Uh, and, and there was the energy, guys flying around. Uh, you know, Ramella White took a charge today. I mean, I've, I've never seen that before. So there are things happening that, that, that haven't happened, uh, and, and I, I know our players are, are you know, going to turn it loose, and, and they're very, very excited to play. Here in the front right. Bobby, um, I asked you guys about playing against Syracuse's zone. You actually played against it when you were a freshman. Yes. Um, ten points or ten assists, I think, with six turnovers, maybe. Thanks uh, for reminding me of that, Doug. <laughs> what What do you remember about that zone, and does it look any different today? Well, I mean, what I remember from that game is it was uh, as a freshman. It was my first. Uh, it was my first game uh, on TV, and it was my first big time game. It was a Big East ACC challenge, and I I, uh, I think Derek Coleman won the tip, and he he tipped it to. Uh, Billy Owens, and then Billy Owens took like two dribbles, and then I was the last guy back, and then he threw a lob to Stevie Thompson, and he just dunked it right over me. That was like, you know, first 10 seconds of my college career. So that's kind of what I remember from that game. Uh, and I don't remember specifically playing against it, but yeah, we had a ton of experience this year. As we got to league play, teams saw, you know, they, they can't let you know, our guards get in the paint, so they, a lot of teams zoned us. So we, we face a lot of zone defense, and especially Washington, I guess, would be a, a mirror image of, of how Syracuse plays their zone. But, they, I mean, no one does it as well as they do. So got a big challenge in terms of attacking it and proving that we're capable of, you know, executing and, and playing great offense against a team that, that, that plays a zone because we didn't always handle it. Uh, great in, in conference play. We're hearing it right on the aisle, then one in. Chancellor Johnson, Cronkite News. Um, your former assistant coach, Nate Oates, uh, he's taking on, now the head coach of Buffalo, he's taking on your in-state rival in Arizona. Uh, what would it mean for you to see him possibly take down uh, uh, U of A, and have you given him any advice? I mean, Nate and I talk quite a bit. We're, we're, we're very good friends. Obviously, we, we uh, spent a couple of years working together and, and shared a championship together, and I'm always invested in and his success, and uh, you know, he's a great coach, and he doesn't particularly need you know my advice. Uh, I, mean, I gave him a couple of nuggets of things that you know that we focused on when when we played Arizona, and uh, you know we played him very well. You know each time we played him this year, so I know he's gonna you know he's a worker. He he's uh, he's watching film. He's he's gonna he's gonna have his guys you know ready to play. You know, Arizona's playing at a you know, phenomenal level right now. They're uh, they've gotten so much better over the last couple of weeks. You're going to write, then we'll go here. Mike Waters from the Syracuse Post Standard. Bob, what do you remember, if anything, about Coach Beheim recruiting you or maybe any other memories of him being down there at St. Anthony's over the years recruiting your dad's players? I just remember, uh, you know, he, when I was coming up, he, he coached great point guards, and that was very, very attractive for me to want to wanna, 
you know, consider playing at Syracuse. I, uh, I saw Pearl Washington play, I, Sherman Douglas, and those were guys I looked up to um, when I was coming up. And uh, I remember an unofficial visit I had at, at Syracuse, and I saw them play in the, in the Big East uh, regular season championship game. It came down to the last regular season game with, with Pittsburgh at, at the Carrier Dome, and it was uh, just a special environment. Uh, so they, yeah, I mean, they were, uh, they were right there. I just, you know, when, when I visited Duke, it was just, I, I couldn't say no to that. But, but it was, uh, you know, I, I always enjoyed, you know, the possibility of, of going there and, and uh, always thought, you know, what a great coach uh, Coach Beheim was. Turn left. Uh, coach, uh, coach Beheim had actually mentioned, you know, obviously you're rich, integrated basketball family and history with coaches and just among the sport, but apparently your mom is the biggest fan of the game and just kind of how she dictates and kind of her passion for the game too. Yeah, my family is uh, you know, probably part of the reason I, I love it the way I do and I'm so expressive about uh, that as I coach. Um, but yeah, I mean, sh she's, she, you know, I never would have gotten where I am with, without, you know, my mom and what, and what all great moms do, you know, they they don't get a lot of credit for all the work they put in getting me to tournaments and practices, you know, as I grew up and then, you know, she always, uh, she's, she kept score, you know, she did every game for my dad as, uh, you know, so that rarely happens in a family. Yep, that front left again. Uh, coach, can you talk a little bit more, um, obviously very passionate about your senior core and then with Cody Justice being from Arizona, so putting his, ta uh, his team and his city on the map too in this moment. Yeah, I mean, Co <coughs> Cody was the first guy I, uh, I hugged after, and he's uh, you know, again a day one guy with me, and uh, just works at it, and has had uh, so many great moments, and just wanted to see that you know him and Trey and, and Shannon, you know, go out uh, the right way, and with, with a tournament appearance and a chance to advance in the tournament, and uh, just this is the beginning, you know, hopefully for us in, in establishing a standard for for Arizona State basketball and what we want to do, and having young guys in the program now that that you know, could get to the tournament, it, it's, uh, you know, that's what we're hoping to do uh, moving forward. And, and these guys are the, you know, the foundation for that, you know, Trey, Shannon, and Cody. You go front right. Bobby, uh, throughout the season, you often had Mickey Mitchell in the middle of the zone. Just what makes him, what do you like about him in the middle of the zone in that position? Yeah, Mickey's, uh, I think, got a good feel for the game. He's, uh, you know, a very good IQ, good passer. Uh, he's strong, you know. Uh, you know, when he catches it, I, you know, rarely do guys just take the ball from him. Uh, and then, he, and then he's got the vision to to move it. And then, you know, he's physical. You know, kind of a downhill attack guy too from the high post. So, you know, you have to. You can't beat you know a zone as good as Syracuse's zone. You know, one way you got to do it multiple ways. And uh, obviously, the high post is important. And you need a guy in there that makes good decisions. Uh, and I think Mickey does a great job in that role. Turn left on the aisle. Coach, you referenced uh, that weekend in December against St. John's and Kansas at the time as a tournament preview or a way to get your guys prepared. How do you think those guys, your guys, have kind of mirrored that experience coming into this game? Yeah, I mean, we we um, it's we didn't talk a ton about that, and and uh, this setup is a little different. We're just kind of focusing on 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 this game, and and uh, you're at the point now, your season, if you're not locked in to who you're playing and how to attack your opponent, then it's going to end quick. So that's just, you know, my mindset, my approach. But, you know, when we're setting up scheduling, you know, we schedule hard because, you know, we want to prepare our guys for, for the NCAA tournament. You know, that's why, that's why you go to Kansas and you play Xavier on a neutral and all these games that we played, high-level games, and been in a lot of wars this year, and you hope that that pays di dividends this time of year. Front right. Well, I mean, it's just <laughs> greater uh, appreciation, you know, for, for how good he is, how successful a guy like Coach Beheim is. Uh, to be able to deliver, you know, tournament appearances and, and Final Fours and national championships for, for that period of time and sustain it, uh, you know, as a program is, is, is unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I had like an unusual out-of-the-box playing experience. Like, I, I thought you're just supposed to, 
go to the NCAA tournament and go to Final Fours, and that's just how it is. No, it's <laughs> it's really difficult. You know, I learned I learned that you know at Wagner, I learned that at at Buffalo, how difficult it is for a mid-major to win your conference tournament so you get to the NCAA field and. Same thing at ASU. It's been it's been a, a steep climb. It's there's been a lot of adversity. It's not easy to, to, to get to this event. So you just you, you feel completely fortunate uh, and and excited for the opportunity if, if you make uh, the NCAA tournament field. So it's uh, it's impressive what what a, what a coach like Coach Beheim has been able to do year in and year out for the career he's had. Yep, front right again. Yeah, I think it's always with me. I try and push my limits, uh, you know, to what I do. And, and I mean, this morning, I, for a guy, I mean, I was I was in the, in the twenty ones for three miles, and that's just my goal. And I'll just crank the treadmill up as high as I could tolerate, and then, and then uh, I'll run as fast as I can, you know, for about that period of time, and then and then I move on. But it's, uh, you know, I just. I want to set the tone for myself to, you know, right away get my day going with that. Um, you know, I, I thought that thing was beneficial. That run, it was hot when we did it. You know, it was, it was. Uh, it took us almost an hour. It was, uh, I think, about six miles, and it was uphill, and and you had to get to the top and back down, and and guys were struggling, man. It was, but but you do things like that, and you hope that it it builds, a, you know, a mental toughness. Ability to fight through things and uh, and push your limits. No, I'm trying to get. I'm in the 21 somewhere, you know, for for three miles on the treadmill. Yeah. Any further questions for Coach? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bobby. Check, 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 check. 